enough of them to achieve the score that you want. Any questions on that? I think that's, a, that's an important distinction. All right, strategies. Well, what are we going to do? Uh, good selection, good selection of your site. Uh, what does this encourage you to do, you suppose? This point encourages you to build where? Anyone? Yes. Bare unused land. What's that? Bare unused land. Bare and unused land? Yeah. Eh, I don't think it encourages you to build on bare land. What if that's farmland? I, I, I mean, I mean, this I'm is going to encourage you to build where? Yes. Besides, besides like the, I don't know, well, somewhere where there's not any wildlife in an urban area. Most there, there areas. we go. There we go. This is going to kind of guide you towards more urban areas to build on. I mean, that would be easy. It's not that you couldn't find some land that wasn't used for farmland and wasn't near a fish, you know, but most likely you have a better chance. If you're buying a parcel of land that's already in a developed area, you're probably going to have a lot better chance of meeting this particular credit. Okay? No guarantees, but a lot better chance. All right. This will usually be done by the civil engineer. Obviously, this is one that is done early, early in the design uh, uh, process. Where, where an owner is thinking, all right, where am I going to buy a piece of ground to build my building on? Okay, so this is done. Um, but, however, many times an owner might ask a contractor to walk them through this as well. So you could find yourselves, in, in terms of a construction, construction management function, helping an owner to choose between um, plots of land to purchase to develop on. Okay, and as a mechanical engineer, I have participated in this as well. An owner takes a, is looking at a few different pieces of land to buy. They get their design team's input on it. What do you think about this one? This one cost me this much, but it's so big. And a lot of times, uh, an owner will look at a piece of land and just say, well, it's, it's 10 acres. Many times, you need to walk them through, it might be 10 acres, but let's look at the developable footprint of this. Right? I had one owner come to me, hey, you know, I got this 10 great deal on a 10-acre piece of land. And I'm like, look at where that floodplain is. He said, you only have maybe one acre that you could put a building or a parking lot on. Suddenly, it wasn't such a good deal. So um, that's what you might have to walk an owner through. All right. Development, density, and community connectivity. Uh, good for five points. All right. So this one's obviously uh, more important than the last one. Now, the change from version 2 to version 3, lead 2009, they weighed them more heavily towards saving energy and reducing fossil fuels and, and, and pollution. All right? And when I say energy, they're wanting you to develop in an urban area for what reason? Yes. Reduce transportation costs. There we go. Reduce transportation costs. Uh, resources used for transportation. They want you to build where there's an existing infrastructure. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Let's look at the intent here. Remember the intent, the overarching goal. What do we want to do? Encourage development in urban areas with existing infrastructure. Protect green fields and preserve habitat natural resources. That's fine. That's our, that's our overarching intent. Now let's look at the requirements. There's two options here. Two mutually exclusive options. You don't have to do both. You have to pick one or the other. Option one is development density. Construct or renovate a building on a previously developed site and in a community with a minimum density of 60,000 square feet per net acre. Anyone want to give me a feel for what that business means, the 60,000 square feet per net acre? What type of environment would that be? Yes. That would be a multi-story, so you're building yes. it up instead of out. Yes, exactly. That's usually going to put us in at least, you know, the surrounding neighborhood is probably at least built up to a two-story. You know, it doesn't have to be a metropolitan area, but, you know, two-story development kind of, kind of surroundings, that's what we're talking about. Now, how would we prove this? Google Earth, site map, hey, here's our surrounding area. You have to do a little research. You've got to figure out, well... You know, this
this building's footprint is so big and it's got two stories and you know so so you actually have to calculate this you have to calculate you know what's how many you know per acre of land how many square feet of actual uh, uh, building space is there surrounding us okay so there's a little calculation that goes into this option two community connectivity construct or renovate a building in a site that meets the following criteria this you build on a previously developed site and within a half mile of a residential area or neighborhood with an average density of 10 units per net acre and these are important ands and within a half mile of at least 10 basic services now what's a basic service uh, here's some examples an expanded list than what's just on this slide uh, bank, place of worship, convenience grocery, daycare center, cleaners, fire station, beauty salon, hardware, laundry, library, medical or dental office, senior care facility, park, pharmacy, post office, restaurant, school, supermarket, theater, community center, fitness center, museum, and with pedestrian access between the building and these services. Why does Lead care if you're building next to a museum or a supermarket? What's Let's get to the heart of this particular credit. What's this, what's this option two going for? Yes, Marco. Travel, travel distance. Okay. Travel distance, absolutely. Travel distance and these services. How much of a travel distance? Yeah, the half mile. But why is that important? There, exactly, exactly. They're trying to give you, I mean, five points is a lot of points. They're trying to give you a serious incentive to build in an area that's already built up in such that, right? Remember, part one was, or I'm sorry, part one is previously developed, but it's within a half mile of a residential area and all of these services. The idea here is that a person working at your building could, doesn't mean they have to, but they could live work and get most of the stuff that they need, you know, grocery store, daycare, on, within walking distance, within a reasonable walking distance. That's their goal here. Reduce, I mean, one, we're building on a previously developed site, so we're not plowing up uh, greenfield. But also, we're, we're encouraging people to either walk or bike, you know, leave that car at home, that type of thing. That's the whole purpose here of this particular um, uh, credit. Now, how do we prove option two? Anyone? Come on. Prove it. You just use like Google Maps again. Here or we go. Like that. Google Earth. You get a get a get a you know half mile radius, you draw a circle. Here's our site, here's a half mile circle. Right? And then you just label, here's you know, new way dry cleaners, here's the Here's the um, you know uh, koala care uh, child care center. You know, and you just label those. It's it's pretty easy to do, pretty easy to prove, if you will. And then you take that drawing that you just created, and you electronically you would upload it, upload it to uh, um, to the website. Now, in the book, let's look at sustainable site credit two. Let's see here. Exemplary performance. All right. It tells you that you can get exemplary performance for this one. Um, either you double the density, right? Like if you took that, that 60,000 square feet per net acre and you had 120,000 square feet. In other words, it's really a densely developed area already. You doubled it. That gets you an exemplary performance. Okay, or let's see here, the average density, let's see, is twice as large. Okay, the, the point is, is that, is that you can get exemplary performance this one by doubling your requirement. Okay, All right, and, and exemplary performance is one that they will ask you uh, questions on.